It was a debate within a debate over the order of speakers. Specifically, when should the leader of the opposition make his contribution to the debate? According to the leader of government business in the House of Assembly, Dr. Ernest Hiller, the leader of the opposition broke with convention by refusing to make his contribution immediately following the prime ministers. As leader of the opposition, he wants to speak at a certain time. He calls the leader of government business, and if he doesn't want to call me, I can understand why he can call the prime minister and say, can you accommodate me at a certain time? But it is not for me to call him to find out when he wants to speak. He is no longer prime minister. The Miku of the representative of Miku South must understand that he's not in control of this chamber. So he has decided that he's not speaking this morning. And no one can make him speak. Truth be told, Mr. Speaker, we want a mature parliamentary debate. We want a mature discourse in this country. So we will speak. And we will start the debate, even if he doesn't want to do so, as is expected of him. But he must never take our graciousness to mean weakness. So, we are going to start the debate. But I'm going to say to him, the member for Mikosov, if he does not speak by a certain time this afternoon, he will lose his right to speak. Dr. Hiller also took issue with the complaint made by the leader of the opposition, one not made within the legislative chamber, though, in which he labeled the continuation of the misfeasance case against him as a costly political witch hunt. I listened to the member from Miku South speak about the government spending money in a court case against him. And I'm thinking, who advises him? Does his... Does, Mr. Speaker... Mr. Speaker, there you have a prime minister who spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to get after members on this side, the member from Castle Central, the member from Denry North for the National Lotteries, myself, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I have the entire list, Mr. Speaker, of all the legal bills that were supposed to be paid, some still outstanding. But he'll say that they're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to get after him for just 30 odd thousand dollars. And I laughed. According to Dr. Hiller, the former Prime Minister pursued his political rivals at a cost of hundreds of thousands of dollars from the public's purse. In my own case, he claimed I defrauded the British government 5,000 pounds. And I can recall, Mr. Speaker, police officers being sent up to England on two occasions. Scotland Yard being asked to investigate me. At the expense, taxpayers' expenses. They travel business to England. And I know COVID caught them in England. They had to spend extra days in England in a hotel because they could not travel. He, doesn't, he forgets that. He forgets that. I had to read documents he wrote to the U.S. government to ask Gmail to release all my emails so they can read my emails. He forgot he did this. He forgot he did this. And then listen to him. He went to his attorney general and said we're not spending any more money on that case against him. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, can you have a word with the member from Miko South? Mr. Speaker, I mean, how do you say that you are prime minister, that you directed the attorney general not to spend money on a case against yourself? How could you, how did you even become prime minister of St. Lucia with that level of thinking, Mr. Speaker? The gloves have long been off between these two titans of St. Lucian politics, the leader of the opposition, Alan Shastney, and the leader of government business in the House, Dr. Ernest Hiller. This unsavory relationship between the two has largely defined the relationship between the two main political parties and may continue to cast a long shadow over politics in St. Lucia for the duration of this 12th Parliament and beyond.